Hey, welcome to Science for the Non-Scientists. Today, I'm gonna to be talking with Dr. Adrian Smith, who's an insect biologist. He studies insect behavior and communication and records really cool videos of insects uh, on his uh, YouTube channel called Ant Lab. Everything from the behavior of beetles and lice to insects in flight to how ant stingers work. This is an example of one of his really cool videos. His other claim to fame is that his third grade picture uh, back in the 90s is the uh, subject for the Grayson meme on the internet. So if you've seen this and read about Grayson, well, that's him, Dr. Adrian Smith. All right, let's get started. So uh, I'm really happy to be here today with Dr. Adrian Smith. He studies insect behavior and uh, communication both at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences and at uh, North Carolina State University. He also has this really cool uh, YouTube channel on insect behavior, uh, where you can watch really neat videos of insects flying, hopping, cutting leaves, you know, the, the normal behaviors that they engage in, but kind of really at a micro level and see what's really going on. And I'll have a link to that in the description. Uh, so Dr. Smith, thank you so much for being here. Uh, why don't we start off by just, sh you know, you sharing with my audience what, what exactly you study? Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad to, glad to talk to you. Um, I, I study, like you said, insect behavior. Most of it up until a couple of years ago was exclusively on ants. Okay. Um, so I've, I've been studying ants. I've been, I started working in an ant lab uh, to sort of earn money uh, to pay for my college when I went to college at Florida State and got my PhD in sort of ant behavior and communication. And now I sort of branched and, and currently branching out into more general insect behavior. Um, and then a big part of my work too is um, finding ways to bring my science to the public and make it accessible. And my main way of doing that right now is through YouTube. So um, a lot of my work, um, is both in like academic scholarship, kind of studying behavior to publish in an academic journal, but then a whole other chunk of it is doing the same sort of things, but for a public audience through making videos about my work and why I'm interested in it, what I'm doing, and what sort of these insects are out there in the world doing. Uh, so let me stop you for a second. You worked in an ant lab as a college student. What, uh, what were you doing there? Uh, washing dishes, basically. Uh, I was... Um, and my, my family didn't go to college. Um, my parents don't have uh, college degrees or anything like that. So um, I didn't really know what to be as a college student. I was sort of undeclared. Mm -hmm. And one of my bio 101 professor uh, needed, was looking to hire someone to do like odd jobs, wash dishes, like clean up in the lab, do that sort of stuff, help grad students and postdocs. And so I needed a job. So I took it and it turned out that he, it was an ant lab. They studied uh, fire ants mostly. And I was just like, what, you can do that for a job? That's, that's incredible, I had no idea. Um, yeah. And so I worked there for like three and a half years um, and kind of did odd jobs and then did my own research projects or tr what, I, what sort of I was calling research projects right now, you know, they were just messing around in the lab mostly. Um, but yeah, so that kind of got me in, into the whole thing and just kind of happenstance fall into it. That's really neat. What, uh, what are some of the projects that you're currently focusing on? Oh, right now we're, um, the only ant project we have is a, we're a, a, a genome, a genome project on, on the trap jaw ants that I've done a lot of work on. Um, and then the active sort of behavior projects are actually with um, one little beetle larva that we found in a dead tree on campus that jumps like nothing else on earth. It does this weird little body contortion where it sort of grabs on and then kind of kind of like flexes and then all of a sudden pops into the air. So mm -hmm. we're describing that little weird thing. Um, and then a couple other odd projects with like springtails and plant lice. And then um, uh, I'm collaborating with a postdoc to actually study uh, science videos and do some social science about how people communicate science and how people perceive um, scientists when they talk about their works in online environments. So kind oh, of that's just really like, interesting. yeah, yeah, a whole bunch of different things. 
so what uh, what sort of tools do you use to study these ants, or not just ants, but other insects, their behavior and motion? Yeah, well, um, I, it's kind of boiled down to, um, I, I kind of see it as then these, these organisms live on time scales and like in a physical world that's way different from our own perceived mm -hmm. physical world, like the things that they do are much smaller, much faster. Um, and they even use senses that we aren't our primary senses, like like chemicals to communicate uh, for ants, for instance. Um, so a lot of it boils down to kind of um, using tools that help me see things that I can't see on my own. So that that might mean like doing a, a chemical analysis or that might mean doing like a long scale time lapse photography or it might mean using a high speed camera to like slow things down um, and see what happens and that in this like fractions of a second. Um, gotcha. So it's really about like expanding kind of how you how I can look at these animals with different like science tools, um, which can be anything from a video camera to a, a, a a GC mass spec or something like that. So in one of your projects, you, you said you were studying the genome, which uh, I take it means all of the genes that are associated with that animal. What mm -hmm. are you trying to find? Well, we uh, that kind of grew out of a project of how these ants make um, chemicals, which mm -hmm allow them to communicate things like I belong in this nest or I don't, or I'm reproductive or I'm not, or I'm a queen or I'm a worker. And so I was, I'm was i particularly interested in sort of how those biosynthesis genes are sort of expressed um, in different uh, forms of, of ants. So like in a reproductive worker or in a queen or in a male or, or things like that. Um, so we had some extra funds at the time. We, we sent a bunch away to get sequence. And um, we're, we're, we also have some gene, gene expression data over you know, a different forms of these ants. So it's kind of a descriptive thing, but with, that, with those sort of, sort of questions in mind, I guess. So trying to understand maybe some of the genes that underlie the, the different states of the insects or their different behaviors. That's right, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because we have predictions about what what genes we think are important for, for these sort of patterns and what we expect based on other animals, other insects that have been, um, had their genomes and gene expression patterns looked at. Um, so we're kind of uh, looking at that uh, for these ants because a lot of the behaviors and sort of proximate things like what chemicals they use to communicate has been figured out. So now we're like mm -hmm. going down to the fundamentals and trying to figure out, you know, um, what, what are the genes of interest that might be um, leading to these expressions of, of chemicals on their bodies. Gotcha. So if you look towards um, the future, what, um, let's say in the next 10 or 20 years, what do you think are some of the really important questions about animal behavior or insect behavior that, that it's important for us to know about? Oh, well, um, I, yeah, I have a, well, let me give you this answer. So I, sure. I think, I think um, what's really, what's really interesting to me in doing this stuff is that it's kind of different from like biomedical research or, or something like that. And that like describing what an ant is doing and why kind of has no immediate practical benefit at all. Mm -hmm. Yet, yet it's science that's performed and done largely in publicly funded institutions. And if you, you know, get a grant to study it with from public dollars. And so that immediately sets up like a, a, a sort of disconnect from like, why are you doing this? And like, why should anybody care? Yeah. And for me and my work, like the, the explosion of like the internet of, of user generated content of places like YouTube and social media sites has has given me like a, has sort of changed how I think about research and how I do research and that it's, it's important to me not only to do the research, but to do almost as much work into making it relevant or, or, you know, giving a public pitch for why this stuff is interesting and worth thinking about and worth doing. Yeah. So I think 
at the same, I think one like major question that's across all of this type of research is like how are researchers and scientists going to use opportunities to sort of give public oriented pitches and and sort of change how how people can interact with the science that they do because it it because use utility and use isn't like in the forefront of any of this research really um, kind of the onus is on uh, the people in the field uh, at large to sort of um, I don't know um, represent and move their field forward in a sort of public way I think yeah so I think there's tons of opportunity for that um, with things like YouTube with things like um, social media and I'm always eager and interesting to, interested to see in how new generations or current generations adopt these opportunities and platforms to talk about their research or um, sort of uh, demonstrate the, the value and the worth of this stuff in, in new and unique ways. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really interesting. I think um, you've really honed in on something that I think is really important for science and scientists, which is to uh, engage you know, non-scientists and uh, invite them into their world so that this isn't something that's been done by or being done by a small group of people that are you know, um, not uh, connected with the rest of the world, but that it's something that the public can sort of share in and understand. And, uh, and I think your videos are great. So to anybody watching this, please check them out. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy them. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for um, spending just a few minutes talking. And uh, again, anybody can check out his videos and I'll also put his website on there. So if you wanna learn more about his research, feel free, uh, sorry, please feel free to uh, check that out. Thank you so very much. Yeah, thank you, it's fun.